He paid for all of the sins, for all of the people, for all of time. You know, it doesn't take a double doctoral or a master's work. I'm not poking fun at anybody. Be who God created you to be, please. It always boils down to our relationship with Jesus. That, it, that relationship affects everything in our lives. God chose Israel. Our founding fathers chose God. Be a doer of the word. Because faith without works is dead, for real. That's religion, that's knowledge, that's intellect. You need to go out there and engage with your world and own your liberty. So the body being the body, what a day, eh? It's so fun. We get to witness and be a part of the body being the body. And all the components God worked on for years before he brought them here to us. Yes. And you, and me, and my honey, Everybody. and every one of us. Prepared for a time such as this. Chosen to be here right now. Amen. Amen. That's a really big deal. Okay. So, okay. Thank you for your patience. My, my question's a little odd, maybe, um, but where else to bring it than to the body, okay, Amen. of Christ? And, and um, I've been um, listening, listening, um, and it's mainly to Karis teachers, okay? And, and sometimes they'll come and... Um, and, and it's just like maybe even really irrelevant, but they'll um, miss, um, they'll tell a story in the Bible and it won't be like what the Bible wrote. Okay? They'll, like um, this one instructor, he was telling the story of, of Joseph and, and he just, mushed it, you know, it was, it was like, you know, well, yeah, and, and, and Joseph's brothers and his dad came, and then he revealed themselves to him, he revealed himself to them, the whole family in front of the father, and, and that's not what was written in the Bible. So, um, I know that that wasn't the point of the whole teaching at all, okay, but what do, how do, how do I respond, how do I get past something like that? To, to just, maybe just, just like, well, that, that's not really what the Bible said. I still respect the teacher. What do I do? I mean, how do I respond? So I'm gonna to touch on the, the last thing that you said is I still respect the teacher because mm -hmm. we've gotta keep our heart in that place, mm -hmm. right? Because it's all a matter of the heart. <clears throat> so if we can still honor and respect that teacher, then we can begin to come from a place of the knowledge that the Lord's given us. And you know, you know the scriptures. That's why we speak so heavily about knowing the scriptures, right? Um, so that we aren't tossed to and fro by little errors in the way people paint pictures, or a story when they're, when they're sharing it. And then, because my brother is a Karis College grad and has much more time in that schooling side of that, give me your thoughts to that. The first thought I had, well, I had two thoughts right away. Number one, the Bible clearly tells us that prophecy is subject to the prophet. That tells us that man can get in the way. Yeah. Amen? And then the other go-to that I use a lot, um, Paul said, we were talking about the Corinthian church, I no longer look at them after the flesh. Now, if you know anything about the Corinthian church, <laughs> it was a mess. And yet they were born again and they loved the Lord, even though they hadn't worked out all their flesh stuff. And Paul was able to look at them as saints, as brothers and sisters, in spite of what they might be doing, and I'm not going to make any suggestions of what they were doing, because some of it, I don't want to put those images in your head. Wasn't good. 
And that is part of our education at Karis Bible College, is to keep our eye on the prize. Amen. The prize is the high calling, the prize is the word, the prize is the Holy Spirit, and if somebody messes up a story, so what? Can I be transparent? I know I can be transparent here. I've, been so trans I've never been so transparent. <laughs> Praise God. In 73 years as I have been here. I envy people, and I can name them. One sitting right here, another one sitting in the back row. One of them sitting in the sound booth. They can hear a thing, they can read a thing, and it's locked in. And a year later, they can, but you said, do you remember when? And the biggest example I can give, who remembers the Reader's Digest? I like the Reader's Digest. As a kid, we always had it come. And I read it cover to cover. And I enjoyed the stories. But you know, five minutes after I read that story, the only thing I really remembered was maybe the main overview of the story and the fact that I liked it. If you'd asked me the title of that story, I couldn't tell you. Now, whether that's a learning, disability or inability or what, I don't know. I said I was gonna be transparent. I'm not your best go-to guy for addresses. I can quote the Bible to you and I can find where I'm quoting from given time. But when I sit and listen to people like, hmm, Pastor Steve, Pastor Bob, <laughs> just the list goes on and on. Well, it says in John 3, and quotes you to scripture, Andrew Womack. He doesn't even need to carry the Bible. I've fought that all my life. And it's been part of my image problem because I can't do what I want to do and I can't do what I see other people do. And I've prayed and I've everything. So it might be something like that. This instructor might just have a little something going on or maybe there's something, maybe he almost got in a car wreck on the way and he's just a little discombobulated. But see, that's flesh. He's not teaching wrong. He may get some details wrong. He may get some facts wrong. That's what witnesses are for. Amen. You talk to police um, investigators and people that are in the courts. They have multiple witnesses to the same thing. And they know that every witness is not going to have the same story because one might have been looking this way, one might have been looking this way and the sun was in their eyes and you know, the list goes on and on. Bring it closer to home. Jesus walked the earth and four men wrote the gospels. Do they agree for every word, every item, every line? No, no, no. Luke leaves out some things that Mark puts in, and it just, it just keeps going. Through but their lens, that was an important part. From their lens, that was important. The Holy Spirit said, write that down. Yep. They did. Does that make them wrong? Does that make one less than the other because he didn't get the facts right? Not a bit. And the same thing holds true as we go forward in our growth and learning. It's a, it's a trip. It's an experience. So, yes. Yeah. Yeah, and it's easily done. I've done it too, and I catch myself doing it, and I'm sure there's times that it happens that I don't catch myself. And it is when we're telling a story, but really that's not the focus. Mm -hmm. It's about the outcome or the yeah. revelation or mm -hmm. that ties to the story that I'm sharing mm -hmm. that can cause me to get tripped up like that. Keep your heart in the right place with that, and yeah. it'll all be good. Amen. And it, if it's really troubling, you just say, Holy Spirit, help me. Show me. He will. Always. Yeah. We Without don't lean, doubt. I don't believe we lean on the spirit enough. No, we don't. And Ali shared about that this morning. Leaning on the spirit and just asking that constant communication. I think you all know I burn wood. It's how we heat our house. Yeah. And I'm just not getting the heat in the floor this year. I should, but I've been kind of busy with other stuff. And on my little flybys on it, I just don't have it balanced. Didn't. 
have it balanced. So yesterday, driving to men's, guys, if you weren't here yesterday, it was a real blessing. Gosh, we're blessed as we're together as men. Anyway, I said, Lord, what am I missing on that system? I'll get out of the way. Show me. And he showed me a little filter that fits in by one of the pumps. And it's just a little screen filter on a washer. Mm -hmm. Huh. And then I saw it. I knew which, where it was because he showed me the valve. Interesting. So I went home. And I'm like, we spent a few minutes together and had a coffee. And I'm like, OK, I got to go. I got to get this done. The Lord showed me what this is. And I pulled it out. And I looked at it. And I'm like, whoa, that's not that dirty. But then when I looked at the pump, I realized that the plumber that put that particular mixing valve in for me last year in December had it backwards. <laughs> and just that fast. But apparently, I would have not gotten it by him just showing me the valve. He had to show me the filter. Mm -hmm. So I disassembled it. And there I stood. And I'm putting it back together. And I went, oh, that says cold. And that's the hot side. Wait, spun it, right on. Perfect. That's asking the Holy Spirit question. Hey, Pastor Craig finding his wedding ring in the dump yeah. with Pastor Ryan, right? Yeah. That's asking the Holy Spirit. Walk in that place. Sorry, that was like a little bit of a sidebar, but really, truly, 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 use the spirit that resides in you more than you use this. That's got to become natural. Yeah. We call it supernatural. But for a believer, that's natural. If it's still supernatural to you, check your heart. You might have your foot a little too far in the world, in the flesh. See, because God said he's going to send a comforter, a teacher, and he's here full time. He's part of the Godhead, yep. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. If God never sleeps, the Holy Spirit never sleeps. You got a question, take it to him. He may show you the valve, a filter. He may give you a dream in the night. I'm not gonna limit him anyway. Amen, amen. But I do know, when I look back at all the years that I've <laughs> sweated and toiled in serving the Lord, I can't imagine where I'd be now if I had listened to the Holy Spirit from the beginning. It's amazing. It's journey changing. It is. Day by is. day and moment by moment. I, I almost struggle to bring that into application because it is that simple. Mm -hmm. It is that simple. That's what that book's all about, Effortless Change. You get the word of God in your heart and get walking in that lifestyle that we're talking about here, things are going to drop off of you like... <laughs> leaves off the tree in autumn. I mean, without sweating, without toiling, without trying to modify your behavior, yeah. you get the word of God in you, the changes come from the inside out. Organically. Exactly. Yeah. It's that simple. The only effort you have to do is get in the word. That's why that daily reading is such a blessing. Because it forms a good habit. I, for years, read the Bible. But for years, I tried to just check boxes, too. And if you just read, read it, say, I did it there, put that on my list. I read the Bible through another time. You're not going to get anything out of it. But if you be diligent, the Bible says, draw nigh to God, he'll draw nigh to you. Who takes the first step? Draw nigh. Yeah. You'll be amazed. CT first. Yep. Draw nigh. Yep. 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 Mm -hmm. Anybody else not make the Bible plan last year, but they set out with every good intention and heart rolling? Yeah, me too. Almost. And I am not admitting defeat. <laughs> I'm close. <laughs> I don't know. We got kind of busy. I got kind of busy. We got kind of busy. But it's happening. It is. And I will. And then I will. So don't let your soul 
or things other people mm -hmm. set over you stop you from moving forward. No. And if that's cutting a line in the sand and bailing and starting again right Please. now, praise God, do it. Keep we'll support you, we'll honor you, we'll edify you, we'll walk alongside of you. But it was so fun, as Pastor Craig was saying, oh my gosh, I got into the... I know! <laughs> it's cra... <laughs> it's so fun! I've heard it said that preparation time is never wasted. Meditation time is never wasted. Time in the Word is never wasted never. if you put your heart into it. Don't just read with your eyes and your mind. Read yeah. with your heart. Yeah. Yeah. Listen to the Spirit. And he'll take you to places you never dreamed of. Guaranteed. Catch Allie. I asked the Lord what he wanted me to share. And he led me here. And I happened to... Well... We were in the same home, and I'm listening and hearing, and she's asking and sharing, and it's all good. She asked the Lord where to go and what to share. And it started with our prayer circle this morning, the coincidences. And then it led right into the songs we sang, and what Pastor Ryan prayed and what Allie shared, and the book that the Lord tapped Pastor Craig to share, and some of what was on his mm -hmm. heart, and then right into these, this question that, that led to where it is now, which may be a minute of a rabbit trail, but oh well, we're a family. We get to go on rabbit trails. Yeah, it's fine. Together, right? Please say right, somebody. Amen. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Okay. <laughs> yes, Miss Cindy. Cindy Reza. Okay. Uh, well, this seems like an appropriate next step then, because so I was checking boxes last year. Every good Christian should read the Bible through in a year, right? Which, and I did not do that, but I restarted this year. Amen. I'm super excited well about it. And for as, for as much as God opens my understanding to the word, comparatively speaking to back, you know, in the day, there's still stuff I don't get. And and I want to get it. <laughs> so when you read <laughs> something that you're not <laughs> understanding, so this is kind of a personal preference. And anyone in the body who does it different from what even they say, please come tell me because I'm looking for ideas on how to... I could spread seven different versions of the Bible across on the table, but honestly, that gets more confusing. Read one verse seven times. Read one verse. I'm not getting through it that way. I did get out my, com I think it's a commentary. The Old Testament one is like that thick. Is that about right? A commentary? Concordance. Maybe. Concordance. But it like, it, it kind of explains each verse. A commentary? Commentary. Yeah, okay. Commentary. Yep. Okay. So that has been really helpful and it makes it very clear that I did not know what that meant. So I'm asking for what you guys do when you are reading something and you want better clarification on its meaning. And, and I do believe that that would be the meaning that God would have for me to get out of it, for Amen. you to get out of it, be, you know, because I know that we see different things in the same verse um, mm -hmm. sometimes. So did you hear the question? That yep. was, okay, cool. <laughs> That is a question. <laughs> Can't wait to answer. Yeah, it's really a good question. It's a good question. It's a great question, it and it's a great part mm -hmm. of our journey. First and foremost, the word's alive, yeah? Mm -hmm. yeah? So I can read 10 years ago what I just read this morning, Get something new. and it's totally... Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. For me personally, on this read the Bible in a year thing... It's difficult not to be drawn on a rabbit trail as I'm reading. Oh. So I, I purpose to make my time where I let the Lord lead me where he wants me to be, which is typically here. Can you tell because I picked this up right away? Or in my King Jameth. And it's two separate times with the Lord. I know I've said it here a lot of times, don't do it because it's what I do, but I do mm -hmm. morning. My first cup of coffee, and that time with the Lord is that time with the Lord. And I'm very protective of it. So whatever time that is for you guys, learn to be very protective of that time. Amen. And I start Amen. with my daily reading, mm -hmm. and then 
If the Lord leads me on a rabbit trail out of that, awesome, but I'm going to get through part of that daily reading. I'm going to push through. Because just like Pastor Steve shares, it's nothing for me to sit there and go, oh boy, here we go. And three weeks later, I'm back to where he wants me to be. Mm -hmm. Right? No differently than when I'm listening to somebody speak or teach or preach, whatever word you want to use, I can, get, I can go on a journey in a heartbeat at, oh, hey, it's time to go now already. It's been a half hour, 45 minutes. It's been an hour. Oh, my Lord, what, what happened? Right? Okay. So for me, that's what I do. And while I'm doing that, I'm using the inner linear. Okay, we'll talk about that. This is awesome. Uh, because when there's a word I don't understand, I'm on it. And that is to my phone. So if I'm reading on my laptop or I'm reading in the hard Bible, this is typically open sitting next to me with the interlinear there so I can look up the definition of a word. I can look at the context in the Hebrew. I can look at it in the Greek because as we know, these words and these definitions and these contexts change radically the meaning and the thought the Lord penned. God bless, bless you. you. Indeed he does. So that's kind of for me. That, that's how I do that. And um, we can show you the interlineal. Uh, any, any of us here can that are using it, but, but Al certainly can as well. <clears throat> Something I picked up on while you were asking the question, and I may be wrong mm -hmm. in your particular case, but I'll bet you somebody can relate to it. You said you're reading, and you're reading multiple versions, and that's confusing, and then you want to know what that means. And the idea of reading the Bible through in a year is not to master the Bible. Amen. Take the pressure off. Yeah. It is a multifaceted book. The Bible, number one, is a love story. Number two, it's history. Number three, it's a mystery novel. God's got things hidden in there that you can serve him longer than I've been alive. And it might not be time to see it yet. Yep. And if you get stuck, stressed over this one and spend a month on this one verse, you're going to get it before you go, the devil is delighted. Because you're totally distracted. You're totally bound up in the flesh. You're bound up. You're an intellect. It's a spiritual book. You receive it with your spirit. There are some things that are in there for you right now. There are some for you, things in there that are for somebody that maybe just met the Lord a year ago or two, five years ago or whatever, because we're all in different stages. And I'm not making levels. I'm just saying it's different. My mother took me to church when I was two weeks old. I've been going ever since, except for a couple of years of rebellion and when I was a teenager, but that wasn't even rebellious. It was just I didn't go to high school or church. I didn't go to church. I didn't get in trouble, but I've gone to church all my life. I have sought the things of God all my life, but I've already mentioned I toiled and struggled and sweated and a lot of it was in vain. I went to Guatemala as a full-fledged Pharisee. I kid you not, I was as legalistic as the day was long. Bless God, I was going to whip them people into shape. But God. But God. <clears throat> Halfway through my time, the Lord got a hold of me and gave me revelations that I had never gotten in all my church attendance. And it wasn't just one church. It was different denominations, different experiences, different pastors, different teachers. And I even listened to some of the stuff like grace. And I wasn't ready for it because I wasn't listening with my spirit. Get that. But when God got my attention and my brother clarified why I was in Guatemala, he says, well, it's obvious. God took you to Guatemala to kill you. 
because he did. I died to self. I started Amen. listening to what the Lord said. I got revelations on, it started out, I won't share the time, but yeah, no, I might get piggish. You're good, rip it. <laughs> I started out, I'm ministering to people in a country where 60 to 70% of the people are not even married. Because if you want to get married in Guatemala and you have a church wedding, the government doesn't re acknowledge it. You go to the government to make it a legal wedding, the church doesn't acknowledge it. So if you really want to be married and you're a Christian, you've got to have two weddings. Cost-wise, eh, forget it. It's just a ceremony. But the religious teaching, which is a mix of pagan religion mixed with Catholicism and much legalism, they grab the Bible verses that are just like fornicators will not see the kingdom of God. And, by the way, all you women that haven't been married are fornicators. And from the pulpit, they wouldn't call them out. And they couldn't even, if you were in that position, you couldn't do anything in the church other than sweep the floor or work out of where the hot fires for a corporate meal. You couldn't come up front. You couldn't walk in the holy place, which was the raised platform. You had no rights. They called them privileges. You had no privileges. So here I am, called missionary, getting blessed with the gospel and God's love, ministering to all these women who are convinced they're going to hell. And I said, Lord, what do I do? <laughs> I'd ask the women, what are you doing coming to church if you're doomed to hell and there's no redemption? Why are you here? Well, I didn't have an answer. So I started out by saying, Lord, what is marriage in your eyes? Yep. And he led me on a search. I ended up making phone calls to the United States. I, I just, most of the mainline church, as far as I was concerned, had the wrong answer. My daughter got the answer right. And she's the only one in all my searching. And it bore witness with me. It bore witness with the word. And I'm not gonna go into all that whole teaching now because it takes too, time, too much time. But that started me on a, on a walk that opened my heart and opened my spiritual eyes and ears. And from there, between Joseph Prince and Andrew Womack, I got spirit, soul, and body. I got the love of God, the identity of God, or of us in Christ, um, grace and faith. The gospel of grace is incredible. The faith message is great, but if you're only in the faith message, you're missing half of it. Right. Because grace and faith, they have to be together. They work together. One without the other will kill you. You got to have them both. I spent three years. I would do my work at the mission, and I would come home, and I'd lock myself in the office, and I would have a hallelujah time. <laughs> I couldn't wait to see what the Lord was revealing. And that's my wish for each and every one of you. Amen. Amen. Especially as you undertake reading the Bible. Don't get hung up on a verse. Maybe it's not for today. Maybe you don't need it for today. Maybe you need it for tomorrow. And he'll show you tomorrow. Maybe you're not ready to receive that revelation right you now. You might not be there. That just We're on a need-to-know basis, whether you like it or not. Totally distract you. It can, too much information, if you're not ready for it, is deadly our god has a very specific plan for us and he knows us well mm -hmm. what you Amen. can take today you couldn't take maybe even yesterday that's right or a week ago from a revelatory standpoint mm -hmm. Amen. so if we continually put the word in our heart picture it like a five gallon bucket filled with ping pong balls and you want all the ping pong balls out of the bucket and you start pouring the water into the bucket, what happens? Yeah, organically. Mm -hmm. The balls just go away. Mm -hmm. and, 
And the word that you've planted in your heart, the Holy Spirit can breathe on a year and a half from now and go, remember that story? Yep. Oh. And you're ministering to yourself or someone else, because remember, we do the word in ourselves and others. Mm -hmm. So you're doing the word, and all of a sudden, a story or a scripture or a parable or a Bible figure comes up because the Holy Spirit just breathed on it. Well, it couldn't have breathed on it if you didn't have it in you. Right. So this read the Bible in a year, for me, is I'm consuming the word. Mm -hmm. And I'm doing my best, and it's a struggle, to not get stuck in that place. I leave that for my secondary time when I'm with the Lord. Does that help? Yeah. It's a great opportunity, folks. A great opportunity to put some discipline. We like discipline in our lives. We got it too good here in the United States, in case you haven't noticed it. Take it from somebody that's lived in third world country. You people. <laughs> Who's the disciple of Jesus in here? Okay. Discipline is the root word, that's right? That's right. Discipline. Right. So is Jesus the word? Yes. There's a mic drop. Yep. Let him disciple you into his father's kingdom. The way he discipled those that could stop and stand still long enough and listen and pay attention to him while he walked in the flesh. Mm -hmm. They had to make choices. We have to make choices. They had to say, forget about it. I don't want to be involved in fishing anymore. I don't want to be a tax collector anymore. I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to. I want to follow you. And their idle conversation organically went away. Mm -hmm. And the nonsense mm -hmm. in their life organically went mm -hmm. away. And they didn't mm -hmm. care about the stuff and things. They wanted to be discipled by Jesus. I want to be discipled by Jesus. And his spirit lives in me. And his word is alive. So I have to let him disciple me. That's right. And that's the discipline exactly. Pastor Craig just brought to, to, to words. Mm -hmm. We've got to discipline ourselves, our flesh, to be able to sit still to make it happen mm -hmm. and be purposeful about it. Yeah. And not let the things of this world draw us away from that seeking him first mm -hmm. and being discipled by him. I have a desire for 2023, personal desire. I already told you what a great time I've had in the Word. My hope and desire is that was the worst week of my year. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Why not? I'm not, I'm not jumping from mountaintop to mountaintop. I'm getting up there and running along the ridgeline. Amen. Catch that. That's a really big deal, and you're not hurting that preach. You're not yep, hurting. Yeah, that too. <laughs> yeah, nope, they can hurt me right along that ridge top in Jesus' name. It's this roller coaster ride that I refuse to ride because Amen. my king said I don't have to. That's and right. I'm a king and a priest. Amen. If you're riding a roller coaster, it's only by choice. That's right. I had a picture, an example of something that you said about the seed. Um, and Jesus taught in parables, so we'll use the agricultural parable. You and, you and Allie have a garden, right? And you planted a whole bunch of different stuff in your garden. Yep. So if you planted it all, let's say just theoretically you planted it all in the same day, did it all shoot up on the same day? Nope. 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 Neither will the seed in your heart. Your job is to plant the seed, keep it watered, keep it weeded. That's guarding your heart. Don't let the weeds come in. And in its time, in God's time, that verse that's troubling you, well, like, why didn't I see that? That's how he works. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Other questions? Anybody else? Yep. Justin? Hi. <laughs> How are you doing? Good. Doing. We're doing. So, you know, this whole discipleship thing is really a big deal. And, and seeing we just went to d discipline and discipleship, uh, Mateus, a learner. Anybody else in here want to learn more? Yeah. Yeah, I do. I really do. Uh -oh, we I want to learn yeah. constantly. I want to be able to go to bed at night and know in my heart what I learned that day. And praise God for his spirit because he reminds me of that all the time. And then he shows me my journey in a great way. And those little steps along the way. Because we are moving from glory to glory, deeper Amen. in him, every single day. I'm not who I was when I woke up this morning. Because of y'all and because of Jesus. Amen. Discipleship is something we speak to a lot in our family here. Because it is so important and it spoke about biblically a lot. 268 times to be exact out of the King James. It must have been kind of important to the Lord to speak about discipleship. We have a really rare opportunity here, and, and we use that word discipleship, and many are really taught or are walking with in different streams, I mean, um, and they're really truly in relationship. But these kind of questions, these kind of concepts, these kind of revelations come from the discipleship that we get here. We're getting disciplined from the pulpit in the mm -hmm. greater gathering. We're getting disciplined in our grace groups. Yeah. Disciplined isn't a spanking. Everybody knows that, right? We're learning. Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah, get rid of the worldly thought mm -hmm. process, the American discipline. Go stand in the corner, you naughty boy. We're learning, okay. Yet in the relationship of two, you can really go into the deeper things and you can really begin to walk in a way that wouldn't be possible without that relationship one-on-one. -on -one. So if you're not being discipled, I'd encourage you to ask the Lord, how come I don't have an unction to be discipled? That would be a great starting point. Mm -hmm. Lord, why don't I have a desire to have somebody disciple me? Because it's his word. It's important to him. And then, based on the response, then, you need to say, all right, Lord, who should I talk to about discipling me? And then I encourage you to step out to one of us in leadership to to kind of explain what we as a family believe, do, in the discipleship of each other, because it goes both ways. It's not a one-way street in any way, shape, or form. We submit ourselves one to another. Amen? Yep. And we honor and respect each other, because you just came to Christ 15 minutes ago. I want the revelation that brought you to Christ. I. And, and I hope you all do as well. I want the revelation. I want the wisdom. I want the knowledge that you all have. That's why the body is the body. We go back to that. Jesus is the cornerstone, and we are all playing super important parts in this. Brother. Howdy. Hi, Dave. Uh, there's a term that I've heard in this church that I was unfamiliar with before I came here, and everyone seems to know what it means but me, so I've been afraid to ask the question, but after Pastor Craig's last answer, uh, I now really need to know. So my question is, what exactly is legalism? Is it always bad? Is it ever good? And what are the trappings? Because 
that word's been thrown around a few times, mm -hmm. and uh, sometimes just when I'm having a conversation with somebody or if I'm asking a legitimate question, and it might come out as, oh, well, that's legalism, as if that settles the argument, and I'm left going, okay, thanks. <laughs> that really, that really, that really <laughs> helped. <laughs> so that's, that's all I got. Okay. That's a big question. That is a very big question. And it's an awesome question. <laughs> okay. That's why the Lord had me in John 9-1. Amen. Thank you. <laughs> That's where I'm going. <laughs> this morning. <laughs> literally this morning on my notepad, and I'm like, Lord, why is John 9-1 going to be up here? Okay. That's awesome. Thanks. <sighs> wow, is there a good lesson here? Let's see. So Bra doing. Brandon had a question, right, regarding a word that we all toss about. And at exactly the right moment, in exactly the right time, Brandon listened to the Spirit of God saying, ask that question now. Now's the perfect time. Get, that's really big. And I listened to the Lord this morning, and the Holy Spirit immediately told Pastor Craig where he was going to discuss this issue and this topic, right? That's the thread we all <laughs> as a family walk in. And it's glorious. Well done, brother. Yeah, that's just, by the way, it's a sideline. That's where the cancel culture is. Right. Right on. So you want to go looking? Yep. You were going to one. I was going to go to a different one, but go ahead. No, go, no start. I, 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 had, I had one because I wasn't sure where he was going to lead me. I yeah. read the entire chapter. And well, see, chapter 9 stuff. is going to be a message that I'm going to present somewhere. Don't know if it's in Honduras or Africa or Puerto Rico or here. Um, but a real quick example, which will be quicker than I can find it. It's in 9, I know. Well, I might as well start from the beginning and read it. Um, so the Pharisees are observing Jesus. He healed blind men. And then he gets quizzing. Mm -hmm. He gets quizzed because the Pharisees, I'm looking for a particular, oh, I'm in a TPT. That's why I've been studying it in the BSB. There we go. I'm looking for the, the word. The, the Pharisees are looking at Jesus, and he's just ministered to a man, put mud in his eyes, sent him to the pool of Siloam, told him to wash, and he came up seeing, and he came back. And the Pharisees are upset because it happened on a Sunday. Mm -hmm. Forget it that he just healed somebody. He's a sinner because he healed him on a Sunday. And it's against the law. It's illegal. It's against the law. It's illegal to heal, to do anything on Sunday. Mm -hmm. This goes hand in hand when I made the comment that I was a full-fledged Pharisee when I went to the mission field. I was full of legalism. I was full of man's doctrine. Right. We say, well, the Sabbath, that was the law. Yeah, it was Moses' law. Exactly. But there's no way that anybody can fulfill Moses' law the only one that fulfilled Moses' law is Jesus. And when you read through the Old Testament about the law, they made such an ordeal about how to wash their plates. I mean, God set it out, but they followed that, what we call legalistically. 
they totally missed the spirit right. of the law and they went to the letter of the law. I preached a message years ago before I even got revelation about there was an area outside of Ottawa, Illinois, in LaSalle County where, where I lived and there was a country road but on that country road there was a settlement of houses and there was also a school. And when people slowed down for the speed limit sign, they were following the law legally. But if you were going through there for some time of day when there's no kids and you were over the limit a little bit, you might slow down and be observant, but do you have to be down to, I mean, you're out in the middle of nowhere. Do you have to be down to 20, really? If I go through at 30 and I'm aware, I have the spirit of the law not necessarily filling the exact legal law. And that's what the Pharisees did with Moses' law. Exactly. They took it and they made it a work. Right. That's how they could stand and finger wag so many times scripturally. That's legalism. Remember the story of the um, publican? Pharisee's up there and he's reading off his list of stuff like, God, you owe me, I, I'm so good. And I'm not like that guy over there. And that guy over there said, I'm not worthy of anything. Who went home righteous? Publican. That's the spirit. The legal part was the Pharisee. Legalism is anything, anytime. I mean, legalism and religion go hand in hand. Right. And you can do things religiously. Um, maybe somebody loves to bake pies. You can religiously bake a pie every Monday. And we can have coffee every Tuesday. Yeah, you can. Have <laughs> Come back over the spirit side. <laughs> Anything you do like that becomes legalistic, religious. You're driven, it's flesh. God deals with the heart, the spirit. Yep. It's the condition. It's how you receive things. It's how you perceive things. It's how you carry them out. Does that help any? Yep. I, I think it does, yeah. Um, I was going to ask for a modern example, but you just gave one. So if, if, I, if I can try to explain it in my own words just to make sure I have it, Let's go back to the read through the Bible in a year. If we're sticking to that and we've got more in the tank on a given day, but, oh, it says I'm only supposed to read this three chapters of this book, is that following that religiously as opposed to, or legalistically, as opposed to, you know, going on a, on a rabbit trail like Pastor Steve mentions, uh, or, you know, really spirit-led, in my understanding, the, the, well, the concept. Are, are you being are you being are you being told you'll go to hell if you don't read the Bible in a year? Does your faith in God, does your walk, does your journey with the Lord depend on you reading the Bible or not in a year? Nope. Are are you encouraged to read the Bible in a year for yourself to impart the word in your belly? But there's no guilt and condemnation, certainly mm. not no. from anyone in this body over reading the Bible in a year. And, and I guess that's why I, I, when I asked the question initially, I asked if there was ever any good to it because, um, so it sounds like to be truly legalistic, there has to be some attachment to doctrine. Well, it, yes, right? and they were physically going after Jesus because he broke the law. It's a law. Reading the Bible in a year is not a law. Okay. I'm recommending you do that. Take that from Pastor Bob. I would really strongly encourage you to read the Bible in a year and watch what happens. It'll change your life. That's not law. I'm no. not telling you you have to. No. I'll tell you that if you'd enter into discipleship and get over yourself and really submit yourself to somebody that is on this journey and can help you, it will change your life. Mm -hmm. Does that mean I'm telling you you gotta? Mm -hmm. No. Nope. Does that, it's the that actually 
is what I needed to hear. Yeah, thank okay. you. Okay, yeah, yeah, good. It is the spirit. It's the spirit behind it. Yeah, it's the heart. This journey is all a matter of the yeah. heart. Thank and you. that's another good example of it. Yeah. Clark, you need the microphone, please, because it needs to go on recording. Yeah, thanks. So um, there's a verse in the Bible, Mark 2, uh, 2, 27 and 28, that said, this is in response to them questioning Jesus about the Sabbath. You know, why are you breaking the Sabbath? Why are you, why are your disciples eating the bread, the consecrated bread, all this other stuff, and, and so, or whatever, eating on the Sabbath, whatever. Mm -hmm. So Jesus' answer was, the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. And if we took that to heart, everything God created was for us. The Word was created for us. So if we're going to be doing it to do it for legalism reasons, we're not doing it for us, we're doing it to complete something. For Him. Exactly. So, but the difference is, is that if it, we think, well, the Word was given for us, it's not to lord over us, it's for our good. See, the, mm -hmm. the creator of the universe knows you better than you know yourself, Amen. even though a lot of us think we know ourselves very well, and we speak that out over the time. I know me. I know what's going on. Okay. So I'm going to use an example Doc Ryan used here a couple of years ago. You really don't think God invented the pig just so that that beautiful creature would run around and you'd go, wow, I want to eat that. I'm salivating eating that. No, it's one of the ugliest things on the planet. Amen. But it was made to clean up a mess. It had a purpose. Right? That's right. And in the law, in that time frame, they didn't know how to prepare that pig correctly. It lived in the dump. Mm -hmm. And it was full of every worm and everything inside that it could have and on the outside had every form of lice and tick available on the planet, mm -hmm. just like they do when they run around in the swamps today. But praise God they eat good. Oh, they taste good. <laughs> I really like pork a lot. So God in his infinite wisdom said, please don't eat that. It's going to harm you. Don't eat the pigs. I made it to clean up your garbage. Don't eat it. Get it? it? It was a law for our own best interest. Now, on this side of the cross, praise God we can eat pork. After, Peter, but, after Peter's vision. Right. <laughs> right. Those laws, now we've got the Holy Spirit. And so if you're not listening to the Holy Spirit and the conscience that the Holy Spirit works with a lot, you'll still continue to do those things. So if your heart is to serve our Lord and be discipled by him, you'll read his word. Not because Bob said it, not because Craig, not because Steve, not because Andrew, not because your wife mm -hmm. or your husband, because you have a desire to be taught Amen. by the Lord. Amen. Does that help? Okay, one more. Is, no, for me, Bob, it's, I was thinking it's, it's a guideline. The reading the Bible through the year helps me because I can get distracted also, mm -hmm. and it just gives me direction. So it's like a guideline direction. Yeah. Yeah, sure, because yeah. we need to discipline our, our flesh. Amen. The bottom line is read it with your spiritual eyes. Read it with your heart open. Yeah. Don't read it with pen in hand just waiting to check the box. Right. Amen. It's as simple as that. If you get it done, you get it done. If you don't, there's going to be more time. And if there's not, we'll be in heaven, so you know, you know, you'll know it then anyway. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Hmm. Picked up a couple new message ideas. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> so if you guys would rise, we would love to bless you.
now please receive the blessing that the Father has for you. He calls you beloved, the ones that are greatly loved. And we, he and I both desire that you experience prosperity and his type of divine health. And the way this happens is by allowing your soul to prosper through intimacy with him and knowledge of his word. I love you and I'll see you again soon.